hi, my name is Kate, this is my channel, and this is Squirtle. I didn't put him there, he put himself there, so let's see how long we'll stay there while we do this. Um, so this is my March reading wrap-up. Um, as I'm not the first person to say this, but March was long. March went for a really, really long time. And because it went for a really, really long time, I managed to read quite a lot of books. Um, I finished 14 books over March, which is a lot for me. <clears throat> um, so I've actually got lots to talk about, so we'll get started. Um, I think I might first start with the five digital things that I read. Um, the first three are the three books in the, what's this trilogy called? in the Game Changers trilogy by Rachel Reed, um, <clears throat> and they are Game Changer, Heated Rivalry and Tough Guy. Um, these were, I think the second one, Heated Rivalry, um, was recommended by Okie Dokie Boki, um, her um, the Boki on that channel, and she um, recommended Heated Rivalry because it made her rethink happily ever after in a, in a romance novel and what a happily ever after can be. So that struck me as being interesting especially because um, they're set, uh, they're about romance novels about ice hockey players and as I said in my last reading wrap up I'm suddenly very interested in um, ice hockey romance novels and I don't understand why and I still don't understand why. So, <laughs> so um, these were actually um, gay ice hockey romance novels so um each book each of the three books features a male ice hockey player and his male partner um and i agree that like the way that they were structured were very interesting because obviously maybe not obviously um but it was a each relationship began at least began as a secret um as a, the player doesn't want to either come out or be um, widely known to be gay. Um, are they all gay? I think maybe one of one of them was was bi. I think one of the one of the characters is bi across the the three books. Um, and so it was. They were. Re I really. I really liked them. They were fun. Um, they put forward some really interesting relationships, different kinds of relationships and different ways of being gay and different ways of being a man. And I thought that was really valuable. Um, so, but what Do uh, Deboki was saying about questioning what a happily ever after can be, the middle book is about two players who play for rival teams and have been presented throughout their careers. They started in the same season as rookies. Um, they've been presented throughout their careers as direct rivals and um, all of the teams try and encourage them to play up to this rivalry because it gets viewers um, and therefore sponsors and therefore money. So they and then basically for the entirety of their career, they've been secretly banging. Um, and when, where the book begins, or where the main plot kind of begins, is they start to catch feelings. Um, <clears throat> so figuring out how they're going to navigate that becomes the um, point of the book. And the way that they decide to move forward with that really does challenge the idea of the happily ever after. Um, and I thought that was... An interesting approach for a romance novel to, to take. They don't break up, they're not miserable, but it's a, uh, we will, I'm going to tell you, we will secretly be happily ever after with the eventual hope of being happily ever after to the world, which, if we can. So it's not even a, we will get there, it's a, we'll see how it goes, um, which was a really interesting, I think, probably realistic approach to that situation. So um, those are those three ones. Um, I also read books th three and four of the Pucked series by Helena Hunting. Um, so they are Pucked Over and Forever Pucked. Um, I listen to them as audiobooks. I think they're only available as audiobooks. <clears throat> um, I listened to the first two in February. Um, 
airplanes just going overhead. It surprises me every time I hear that now because I'm like, where are these planes going? Like, we're not allowed to travel. Where are these airplanes going? Um, anyway, so they're, they're also ice hockey romance novels. Um, the fourth one returns to the original couple. Um, again, silly slapstick, totally fine, bit of fluff not going to change my world but fun to listen to okay so those are the five digital things that I read in March so now I'm just going to start with the um the physical books and I'm just going to pick them up from the pile that I've got here beside me so the first one I'm going to talk about is Mary Lou is Everywhere by Sarah Elaine Smith um I read this book as it was the book club book pick for my uh book club for March um it's the bad women book club so every month we read a book that is um usually by always by a woman and about an unlikable female character and we asked the question is this woman it was originally is this woman bad um but has since become is this woman bad mad or sad um which is you know a fun little tagline i think um our march um a book club was cancelled because the um the first round of um social distancing restrictions and closures and stuff happened a couple of days before the meeting um, was due. Um, so they just cancelled that whole week of book clubs. <clears throat> um, next month we are going to be doing a virtual book club um, through Zoom. Um, I'm not sure what that book is, The Godmother, The Godmother by whoever that's by. Um, and we'll also be briefly discussing this since we missed out on our discussion for March. Um, I liked it. I didn't love it. I thought it was beautifully written. I thought it was beautifully written um, and it was <clears throat> um, depressing. It sort of was set in the type of rural America that you don't often see, the type of rural America that is dirt poor and nobody has any expectation that anything's going to change. But there isn't a, there's not that reach for something to change either because this is just how everybody lives and it doesn't seem to, doesn't seem to occur to, at least to these characters, that life could be different, um, that we just live like this. Um, and I found that really sad um, because I don't think they realised how poor they are. Um, and the, <clears throat> it was very isolating. It felt very lonely and very small. Um, and it felt like all of the neighbors were very distant. Um, and uh, I think it was before social distancing was a thing in this country. It was a thing before we was a thing we had to do, we had to do or a thing that we had to think about. Um, so interesting that I'm using those words. Um, but the writing was beautiful um although sometimes it did get a little bit much okay so that's um mary lewis everywhere by sarah elaine smith um the next thing that i'll talk about is um boundless by carrie Vaughan. this is set in the future after essentially an apocalypse um or a series of small apocalypses which build up to the world basically the world ending um lots of tsunamis and earthquakes um uh, big storms, um, bushfires or wildfires because I think it's set in like what near what was California. Um, so I think they call them wildfires. Um, and then also plagues. So there was a few moments where I'm like, oh, I don't want to read about a plague. But it wasn't about the plague. There was just occasionally mentions of it. Um, but in this world, um, it, was a, it's a, it was a crime thriller set in that world. Um, and um, told from the point of view of what's essentially a detective. Um, and uh, yeah, it was interesting. There was some interesting stuff about um, reproduction and only taking what you need. Hashtag toilet paper. <laughs> um, and it was um, with reproduction, you so everyone was sort of living in like uh, shared households. So maybe 
three or four couples and their children living together and you have to work together and your house will earn what they call a banner, so a big piece of cloth that says that they have the right to have a child and then within that house they have to decide who's going to have that baby. But you have to apply for it and you have to be approved. And um, a non-approved pregnancy or a bannerless pregnancy is basically the worst crime that you can commit. Um, so um, it was light, it was easy, um, minus the mentions of plague. I enjoyed it. Um, my uh, other book club, the Other Worlds book club, was also cancelled. Um, but I didn't actually, um, that was, I had, oh, sorry, I had already finished the book um, when that was announced. Um, and so that book was The Ninth Sorceress by Bonnie Wynn. Um, this is a, um, published by a small Australian press. Um, and it's from the first book in a series called The Price of Magic. It was a very stereotypical fantasy world with a very stereotypical fantasy storyline about an orphan who is like the secret chosen one. Um, for like this much of the book, not a lot happened. And then in this much of the book, so much happened that I actually couldn't keep track of it. Bye. Um, I actually couldn't keep track of what was going on and it just went over my head because I feel like there was just, there were bits that I missed. Um, so I don't think I would recommend it as a general book, but you know, it was fine. Probably 14 year old me would have quite enjoyed it. Um, the next one that I want to talk about is my most recent finish and that is Comfort Read. It's the third time I've read this book. I just needed something hopeful and something about good people. And that thing that I picked was The Goblin Emperor by Catherine Addison. Um, it's just about a, a, um, a prince essentially who, who's, his father doesn't want him. He's the youngest son. He's been sent away and banished. Um, and then in a tragic accident, his father and all of his brothers die and he is put into the position of being the emperor and he's never been taught how to be the emperor he's never been taught how anything really works because he's never really lived in the city he's always been off in the countryside by himself with like three people living in the house and he doesn't know what to do but he's a good person and he wants to do the right thing and he wants to make the right decisions and he wants to be a good emperor and he spends whole book trying desperately to be a good person and it's just lovely and it's hopeful and that's what I needed and that's what I got and I really recommend it. Um, next I read um, another trilogy, um, the Captive Prince trilogy, so that's Captive Prince, Prince's Gambit and King's Rising by um, C.S. Picat. Um, I borrowed these from my flatmate, they've been on her shelf, she's been trying to get me to read them for a long time and I devoured them in like four days even though I was also going to work. Um, yeah, a really slow burn romance, um, interesting. The second trilogy that I read this month was a gay romance trilogy. So a slow burn gay romance um, in a world where a gay romance would not be a thing. Um, they are both princes of two countries, um, enemy countries, rival, rival hockey players, rival princes. Didn't notice that before. Oh, look at that. Um, and um, there's, there is some weird slavery, secret identity, actual slavery, sex slave potential stuff happening, which is a bit uncomfortable, but not overwhelming because it is slow burn. And basically by the time that anything sexually happens for the most part um they're not really slave and master anymore um but again court intrigue um battles um people pretend like good people pretending that they're not good people or good people whose methods aren't ideal um i really liked them so i recommend those um so i also had among Others by Joe Walton, um, 
I really, really, really liked this book. Um, as I was reading it, I was sort of thinking, is this going to be one of those books where you get to the end and you're left wondering if there is actually magic or if it's all in the main character's head? Um, but by the time I got there, I got to the end, I was like, no, 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 the magic is real. Thank goodness, because I'm not, I don't know how I feel about that. It was all a dream, kind of, or maybe they're insane endings. Um, but essentially, this is a boarding school book um, where the main character, Maury, is sent to boarding school after a showdown with the um, big bad, um, who is her mother. Um, she saved the world and now she has to get on with her life and she's been sent to boarding school and she doesn't not quite know how to cope with the world anymore, especially because during the battle her twin sister um, was killed um, and so she doesn't know how to live without her sister. She doesn't know how to live away from magic because in this boarding school there isn't really any magic around. Um, the fairies aren't there. Um, and she deals with it all by reading science fiction and fantasy novels. And there's just lots and lots of discussion about science fiction and fantasy novels. And she goes to a science fiction book club and she has friends who read science fiction. And, like, it's just lists. There's so many books in there that she talks about and authors that she talks about that I'm like, huh, maybe I should track that down and have a read of it. Um, but it was just, it was really lovely and I really recommend it, um, among others, by Joe Walton. And the last book that I read was a mistake. Not that it wasn't good. It was a really, really, really good book. I really enjoyed it. Um, but this was definitely the wrong time for it. Um, I started it just as Australia was announcing all of their um, social distancing restrictions and regulations and closures of various types of business. Um, uh, because of coronavirus and uh, I didn't make the connection in my head about what was happening in the world and picking up and reading this book until it was suddenly very much in my face and really frightening um, and but I was already sucked into the book and enjoying it and it became a little bit hard. That book is The Book of the Unnamed Midwife by Meg Ellison. <clears throat> so this book is told from the point of view of a midwife um, and it begins as a plague, essentially, or a pandemic is hitting. Um, and it's, um, everyone's getting really high fevers. And as a general rule, not, um, as a general, everybody's dying. The people who recover are men. Women very, 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 very rarely recover. And babies do not recover. Children do not recover. Um, pregnant women and women in labour do not recover. Um, she's a midwife and she's like, I, while this pandemic is going, I'm still a midwife. I'm still supporting women to give birth. I've done, I've attended 30 births this week and not a single child has lived more than an hour and then no mother has lived. Um, so eventually she gets it, she goes into her fever dream, and when she wakes up, there's nobody left. Um, so she's sort of moving out. I think she's in LA, and she's sort of slowly creeping out of her house and figuring out what's going on, and it's only men. The only people who are there are men. And so because there are very, very few women in the world anymore, women are a hot commodity, and her life is in danger, she dresses as a man and she travels around and she figures out how to survive in this world. Um, it's told, um, big chunks of it are told through diary entries, which becomes the book of the unnamed midwife. Um, she, every time she meets a group of people presented as a man, she gives her, gives them a different name. She's, it's, and it's sort of like her travels and her journey. Should not have read it. <laughs> I should not have read it as as a, as coronavirus becomes a thing. Um, it was beautifully written, very very powerful, um, structured so well. There are two more books. I believe the trilogy. I will not be reading them um, for at least 
say three years after coronavirus stops. Um, it is not a thing that I need to do to myself and it's probably not a thing that you need to do to yourself. I mean, each to their own, but it's hard going at the moment. So, Book of the Unmade, Unnamed Midwife by Meg Ellison. So, the here are the physical books that I read in the month of March. Here they are. Look how big that pile is. Um, I am foreseeing April as also being a very, very, very long month. Um, I am still working. Um, the Australian government has decided that closing schools and early childhood services is the incorrect decision. Um, they have decided that children are safer in large groups. Um, they are, believe that educators will be safer continuing to go to work. Uh, being surrounded by large groups of children who don't understand social distancing and continuing to change the nappies of large groups of infants who cannot maintain social distancing, especially if they're getting their nappy changed. Um, I'm not bitter at all, but I am still going to work um, because for the moment I still have a job <laughs> and I need the money, as everyone does. So I'm still going to work. I'm not sure how much longer that's going to continue for, but for the time being, I am still anticipating, despite going to work, that I will read a lot of books in April. Um, I think I will need that and I'm pretty sure that a lot of you will be doing this, doing similar things. So stay safe, stay healthy, wash your hands, stay inside. Good luck and enjoy your reading. Bye.